Scott Vance again, CFWI with How to Rank Explain. In this video, we're going to talk a little bit about simplified arrival planning. Uh, in a previous video, we talked about the four fixed flight plan, a simplified method of flight planning, which defines the flight into three phases a departure phase, an en route phase, and an arrival phase. Here, we're going to talk specifically about the arrival phase and a type of profile that we can use for our approach plan. Now, in this case, I'm again going to fall back on the example of the flight from Johnston County to the Dare County Airport in Mantia. And I've got a representation here of the RMAC intersection, which is my transition from en route to arrival phase, and then the Dare County Airport here, signified by runway 1735, and a graphic of a typical layout of part of a GPS approach. Now, when I pass RMAC, I'm beginning the arrival phase of flight. And the way I like to keep myself organized during the arrival phase is I use something called the five A's. The five A's of the arrival. The first A, after I cross my arrival transition point, is I'm going to tune in to the AWOS at the Dare County Airport. If you're going to a tower field, it would be the ATIS or maybe an ASOS at another field, or sometimes you might get the weather from air traffic control. But the first A essentially is getting the automated weather. So we'll do AWOS. And what are we going to get on the AWOS? We're going to get winds, we're going to get ceiling, we're going to get visibility, and we're going to get the altimeter setting. Winds, visibility, and ceiling are the three main factors that we have to consider when selecting the proper approach for the airport. We want a wind favored runway. We want an approach that's going to have the ceiling and visibility requirements to get us on the ground. So using these three things, we can select a proper approach for landing. Or, if there's not an appropriate approach, if the weather conditions are not conducive to landing, with the approaches that we have available, it's time to think about maybe going to the alternate. We'll call that our sixth A. But right now, we've gotten our weather, our first A, we've listened to the AWOS, we've gotten our information. Now with that information, we're going to consider approaches, and we're going to update the altimeter setting. case of the training aircraft with the KLN-94 GPS, we're going to update the altimeter setting in the GPS as well. So with the Barrow aided function, we'll have improved accuracy during the approach operations. Now what we're going to do is we're going to talk to air traffic control. We're going to determine what approach we're going to fly, and we're going to basically get approval for that approach. approach requirements, the courses to be flown, the fixes. We're going to brief ourselves on the approach, and we're going to set up our avionics. In this case, we've decided that we're going to fly the GPS 1-7 approach into the Dare County Airport. So what we're going to do is, as we're navigating, we're going to load the approach, we're going to select the initial approach fix, and we're going to load that into the active flight plan. And we'll cover that a little bit in the using the KLN-94 GPS video in a second. So once we do that, we set our avionics, and we're cleared to the initial approach fix, we're going to load and activate that approach, and we're going to begin our navigation from somewhere along the approach segment toward the initial approach fix. Now while we're doing this, we're briefing the approach. We should know before we ever start the approach what the minimum descent altitude is. We should know before starting the approach what the initial action on the missed approach procedure will be. So we don't have to try to look down at the chart 
and low IFR close to the ground. We should just be able to pull it right out of our memory. And I even advocate writing those numbers on the plan view of the approach chart. Taking the MDA and writing it at the top, and then right underneath of it, the graphic representation of the first action on the missed approach procedure. If that's a straight ahead arrow to 2,000 feet, or a right turning arrow to 3,000 feet to signify our first action on executing the missed approach, that's what we need to write down in the plan view. We don't need to be rifling through papers or looking at small print when it comes time to make the missed approach decision. So we're going to brief ourselves on the approach as we're flying toward the initial approach fix. Now, again, there is 40 miles from RMAC to the Derrick County Airport. We have plenty of time to do this. We have plenty of time to do other things like the initial descent checklist, making sure our fuel's on the fullest tank, etc. Whatever the aircraft checklist requires. Now we're just going to fly to the fix, and then we're going to fly the approach. Now we've already briefed the approach, and the GPS approaches are relatively easy. We're going to fly from one fix to the next fix, turn in bang, fly to the final fix, and then to the missed approach point where we'll execute a landing or missed approach procedure. Or if we're coming in on the instrument approach on a non-wind favored runway, we could actually wind up doing a circling approach and land on 3-5, as I've done several times in Air Canada. As we fly the approach, the last A, as you're on the approach, Apply the initial segment, then you're on the final approach course, and before you reach the final approach fix, you configure the airplane for the proper approach airspeed. That means here outside the fix, we're going to throttle back a little bit, we're going to trim the airplane back to the normal approach speed but we're going to maintain the minimum altitude until we cross the final approach fix where we can start our final descent on the final approach segment, the segment between the final approach fix and the missed approach point. So all we have to do when we cross the final approach fix is retard the throttle a little bit, maybe a notch of flaps, and have a stabilized airspeed. So here we are, we reach the arrival fix transition, check our AWOS, ASOS, ATIS, etc. Update the altimeter, select the approach, confirm this with air traffic control, configure the avionics, perform whatever checklists we need to perform, initial descent before you ever reach the initial approach fix, and then final couple of miles outside the final approach fix. And then make sure that when we cross the final approach fix, we're configured for the right airspeed for a normal descent and stabilized descent to the missed approach point and landing. Do we have any questions? Okay. Let's go ahead and take a piece of paper out. We'll do an exercise. And what I'd like you to do is I'd like you to graph how you would set up the final approach phase of the last flight you did. Okay, let's get to it.